All right. Hey, it works. Look at that. So how many of you have had someone at your house, like at 6 o'clock at night, say, it feels like 10 o'clock? Yeah. <laughs> Direct quote, right? Yeah. Hard to get used to the new time, for sure. Um, so thank you for coming out in the middle of the night <laughs> to be here this evening. Let's pray as we get started. God, we thank you again for the gift of your word. We thank you that you show yourself to us, that you call us to know you more. And I ask that you would guide our time tonight. Um, just draw us closer to you and uh, help us to learn more about who you are and what that means for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello to folks who are watching the recording. Glad you are here. We're going to do a quick review of what we went over last week. Um, we talked about our pathway where we worship, grow, and make a difference together. And we are focusing on growing tonight. We talked about um, what we're going to be looking at the next couple of weeks. Tonight, we're going to talk about the Old Testament and the New Testament, get to know each of those a little bit better. And then next week, we'll talk about the ideas of law and gospel, um, and we'll talk about the role of Jesus in the Bible. Spoiler, he's the point, right, of the whole thing. And then we will talk about what's next. Now that you have this information, how do you use it to help you spend more time in God's Word reading the Bible? Uh, this is a quick run through. I think everybody here was here last week, so um, this is mostly for folks online if you're needing to fill in anything. The Bible is about forgiveness and life in Jesus, and we learned some tools to help us better understand God's Word when it doesn't make sense to us. We learned that Scripture interprets Scripture. Uh, and we talked about context, we talked about maybe looking at writings by a different author um, or looking for, or about the same topic or looking at writings of the same author. We talked about testament, interpreting testament, so how the old and new fit together. And we talked about the idea that words do things and how cool it is that you can go back and read the same passage multiple times during your life, and God is going to use it to do different things and bring different things to mind for you. And we also talked about how God, the Holy Spirit, helps us, and the idea that um, it's smart, it's wise to pray before you're going to read God's Word, because He can reveal things to you that you would not be able to understand on your own. We also talked about how you can sum up the Bible in just a few words. Does anyone remember the first word or have that handy? What was our first word? Starts at the C. Mason. Creation. We had to start at the very beginning. What was the next word? By what, page 16 or 19 in my Bible? It was the, the fall. Da -dum -bum, like, bummer. <laughs> that messed everything up, which is why the next word was important. Mason. Redemption. And then another R, restoration. There were the four words that summarize the whole story of what is in God's word. We talked about this being a library, right? 66 books written over 1,500 years by 40 different authors in three different languages. And bonus info for you, it was written on three different continents. Any idea? One of the continents? Ethan. Asia. Bingo. That's one of the continents. What's another continent that parts of the Bible would have been written on? I think Turkey is technically part of Europe and Africa, right? Those, so that's the area, right, where these first writers all were. So that is where the Bible was physically written. All right. Because it is a rainy, dark day, <laughs> it's time to get up and do something active. So... I think what we're going to do, we may be uneven by one person or two people, but we are going to have the students line up on this side and the parents line up on this side. You don't have to be, like, matched with your parent, but we are going to guess. Is the famous quote from the Bible or somewhere else? So here is how this is going to work. So whoever is first on each side is going to come up to the table. I will move my beverage because competition. All right, and the sanitizer is just, just there. So whoever, when I put up the quote, whoever comes and gets the bell first gets to give their answer. All right. <laughs> 
All right, and I'm going to sit down so that the, the camera can see. Say it again, Ethan, ask your question. Oh, good question. I'm not going to sing the Jeopardy song, so not very long. Um, you'll get like to a count of three. So don't just grab the answer or grab the bell and then be like, hmm, hmm, right? So grab the bell when you know the answer. Would the first two players like to come up to the table? You don't have to like run to get there. So who's going to be first? So Mason, you want to just come up? Or do you want to be first? Like, I was thinking we'd actually go in an order. Like, we'd have a line. It wouldn't just be whoever knows it runs up. Excellent, Aiden. Ben, you got this? All right. Let's see. Did I have instructions on the second one? Oh, no. It is more blessed to give than to receive. What do you think, Aiden? Bible or not Bible? You said Bible. He is correct. And woohoo! And each of you can have a piece of candy. I'm being nice, so it's not only to the winners. So, um, and that is from Jesus said it, or he's quoted as saying it um, in Acts chapter 20. All right, want to come on up? You got this. All right, here's our next one. I have escaped only by the skin of my teeth. What do you think, Griffin? Not Bible. Oh, it is Bible. Shucks, you can have candy. You can still have a piece of candy if you want. It is in the book of Job. Sometimes you'll recognize sayings that have worked their way into our culture, right? <laughs> so this is kind of cool for those, those who don't know. This is an aunt and nephew situation going on here, so there's some extra competition. God won't give you more than you can handle, Bible or not Bible. Mason. Not Bible. Right? So the place that people think this is where it's saying this is God won't let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. He never says he won't give you more than you can handle. He won't give you more than he can handle. Oh, here and here it says that. Yeah. With the temptation, God will provide a way of escape. You reap what you sow. Ethan, Bible, not Bible. It is Bible. And it is the Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 6. Well done. All right, who's up? Ooh, father, daughter, here we go. So I'm noticing the bell is not in the center. Does that matter? Okay, just, you know. <laughs> All right, here's our next one. This too shall pass. Bible, not Bible. That is correct, not Bible. And does it say, made famous as part of an address by Abraham Lincoln before the Wisconsin State Agricultural Society. Who knew? All right. Come on up. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Okay, here's our next one. Am I my brother's keeper? Bible or not Bible? What do you think, Mark? Bible. Where in the Bible? You got it. That is Cain talking to God. Sometimes in college, my friends would translate that and say, it's not my turn to watch him. But uh, yes, all right. Oh. <laughs> Allie wants to take down her dad. All right, here it is. Ready? God helps those who help themselves. Bible. Not Bible. Ooh, ouch. Let's see. Oh, made famous by Benjamin Franklin in Poor Richard's Almanac of 1757. Awesome. Next. All right, Kate, you got this? All right. <laughs> I don't know. I think she's a competitive one. You've got to watch out. Here we go. He who lives by the sword dies by the sword. Bible, she says. And it is Bible. Well done. That is in, that's Jesus, Matthew 26. I'm thinking he says that to Peter after Peter cuts off the high priest's servant's ear. True story. All right. Lena, come on up. Crystal? <laughs> All right. Here we go. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Bible or not Bible? What do you think, Lena? You are correct. Not Bible. Well done. Whoop, whoop. A quote from John Wesley in a sermon in 1778. He was the founder of the Methodist Church. All right. Back to the beginning of the kiddo line. Aiden, come on up back. We've got a couple more, I think. All right. Ready, Dawn? Here we go. The Lord works in mysterious ways. Aiden, what do you think? Not Bible. Oh, good guess. 
part of a hymn written by William Cowper in the 19th century. Hmm. All right, Jeff and Mason, here we go. This is a tiebreaker. Not really. I didn't take that slide out. Okay, this is, but this is the last one. Okay, ready? It is. Money is the root of all evil. Mason, what do you think? Not Bible. Does anyone know what it actually says? Money is, or love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Yes, not money itself. It's our attitude toward it. Well done. Thank you. If you did not, anyone not get a mint, you're welcome to grab a mint. It, help yourself to a mint. Uh, no. It was in the supply cabinet. Hmm. Yes. Uh, trash can. Hmm. Oh, in the sound booth. If, thank, and thank you, Ethan, for paying attention. So it would be really great if I didn't have to pick up wrappers at the end of the night. So there is, I know there is a trash booth in the, no, trash bin in the corner of the sound booth. All right, let me reposition this. All right, so students, tonight is a night to shake out and warm up your hand. There's going to be some writing to do because we are going to get more familiar with the names of the books of the Bible. Okay, so we are starting in the Old Testament, and last week we learned that the first five books of the Bible were called the Pentateuch, which means first five, and sometimes those were called the Law, and these are history. So we learn a lot about the beginning of the world and God's people. And here are the books. Now you should have a page. Let's see what page you are on where you can write these down. Flip one more page. Yes. All right, so page, yeah, they're not n numbered. So there's one that says page eight, the one before that. Yeah, let me hold it up. It looks like this. It says the Pentateuch at the top, and then it has five blanks underneath it. So you get to write down the books of the Bible on those blanks. So you have Genesis, which means beginning. You have Exodus. You have Leviticus. Numbers and Deuteronomy. There are a whole bunch of things that happen in these small five books of the Bible. Many of them that you would have learned about perhaps in Sunday school or in a Bible storybook. Um, some things like creation and the fall. The flood with Noah and the ark. The Tower of Babel, where God confused everybody's language because people tried to build a tower all the way up to the heavens. Um, Abraham was called Abram, and God called him and changed his name. Um, he had a son, Isaac. God asked Abraham to sacrifice him and then provided a ram instead. Uh, Isaac's son, Jacob, and Esau uh, had a fight, and I, or Jacob ended up having 12 sons, and maybe you've seen a musical about one of them, about Joseph with his coat of many colors. And he ends up being second in command to Pharaoh after a lot of really icky things happen to him. And that only brings us to the end of Genesis. <laughs> so a lot happens in that book. Um, in Exodus, you've met baby Moses before, right? He was in a basket. And God saved him and put him in the household of Pharaoh to grow up. And uh, then later called him, talked to him, uh, told him, his name, right, told Moses' his name through the burning bush and uh, led to the Israelites being released from Egypt. And in these books, we also learn about God's rules for us and how we are to live together. And you will get to learn a lot more about that in next year when you're in seventh grade. We'll get to talk about the Ten Commandments. <laughs> you could learn about it by watching Veggie Tales as well. And we see uh, God's people mess up over and over and over again, and God is merciful and keeps calling them back to him. All right. Shake out your hand. Stretch. Get ready for the next section. The Old Testament. This is also history. Many true stories in these books. So you've got Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther.
this section of the Bible takes Israel through a time of uh, judges who helped usually try to point them back to following God. Uh, and then when they started asking for a king. And so you hear about King Saul, you hear about King David, King Solomon, and then a whole bunch of kings in two different kingdoms who nine times out of ten don't follow what God said. And God keeps calling them back to him. At the end of this section, both the two nations called Israel and Judah are overthrown and actually sent into exile. Most of the people got, like, deported kind of <laughs> to, to live in other parts of the world. Give me a thumbs up when you've made it to Esther. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. All right, so the next segment is called Wisdom Literature. These are poetry, sayings, songs. We have Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon. And a lot of these do contain historical information. Um, I think I mentioned last week, especially uh, like there are Psalms that you'll see in two places. You might see it in the Psalms and you might see it in like First or Second Samuel because that was about David and you get to see like where what he was doing or thinking at the time that he wrote that. Um, and last week we talked a little bit, I think, did we talk about what a proverb is? Do you remember? A proverb is a wise saying. It's like instruction for life. A lot of the proverbs were, were written by Solomon, who was the wisest person ever. He asked God for wisdom, and God gave it to him. Give me a thumbs up when you have these written down as well. A little shorter list. And then give your hand a good shake. It'll be a while before we write again because we get to play a game. Just doing a quick check of our list. Awesome. All right, so since this uh, section contains things written by Solomon, we are going to find out is it a slogan or something from Solomon? And let's see, for this one, let's have you, if you think it is Solomon, you can stand up. If you think it's a slogan, like from an ad campaign or wherever, you can stay seated. All right, so yes, is the, com the message on the billboard a company slogan or a verse from Proverbs? All right, here's the first one. The more you get, the less you are. Stand up if you think it is a proverb or Solomon, and sit down, if, stay seated if you think it is a slogan. Ethan's brave. It is from Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 19. Winner, winner. If you want another mint, you can come up and get it. That was awesome. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's not your favorite flavor, huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. All right, here's your next one. The right word at the right time. Beautiful. Slogan or Solomon. So stand up if you think it's Solomon. Stay seated if you think it's slogan. We have a bunch of slogan people. Also Proverbs. Chapter 15, verse 23. Everyone's going to go home and be like, I need to scan through, through uh, Proverbs. All right, how about this one? Between love and madness lies obsession. Proverbs or, what am I trying to say? Slogan or Solomon? Should have stayed sitting down. It's actually an old one from Calvin Klein. <laughs> I think obsession was a, a fragrance, wasn't it? It was a, a, a fragrance, like a cologne or something. All right, next one. Keep your eyes straight ahead. Slogan or Solomon? Like just playing the averages here, right? Eventually it's got <laughs> to be the right one. You are correct. That is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25. You, of course, you can have a mint. Yeah. All right. Get ready for the next one. Beauty inside, no, opposite. Beauty outside, beast inside. Slogan or Solomon? Solomon. 
It is a slogan from Apple. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like Apple computers, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know how Beast com uh, like fits with computing, but. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> How about this one, I am what I am, slogan or Solomon? We've got lots of people who say Solomon. <laughs> Reebok, sorry. <laughs> uh, right, right, Popeye, one of the two. <laughs> hmm. I, I don't know, did, was that copyrighted before Reebok got it, right? All right, how about this one, point your kids in the right direction, slogan or Solomon? I would say these are perhaps paraphrases. Yes, yeah, so this is a paraphrase of Proverbs 22, 6. Like train your child in the way they should go. So same kind of idea, right? All right. Here's our next one. The greatest tragedy is indifference. Slogan or Solomon? It's actually a slogan from the Red Cross. <laughs> They are tricky. All right, two more. A plain and simple life is a full life. Slogan or Solomon? It is indeed Solomon. Proverbs chapter 13. All right, how about this one, our last one. Impossible is nothing. Slogan or Solomon? That's true. That would have made it. Maybe Solomon. Adidas. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for playing along with Slogan or Solomon. All right. Shake out the hand. Grab a mint if you need it. Get ready for our next section. We are entering the prophets. So in the Old Testament, there are two sections of prophets. It's called the major prophets and the minor prophets. Not because one's better than the other, not because of any particular musical style or key, but because they are simply longer books. <laughs> so the major prophet books are longer, the minor prophet books are shorter. Um, so our major prophets are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. And give me a thumbs up when you get through Daniel. Thank you. Yes, write it in prophecy. Um, and I would just do them in order. If you're going down or across, just do them in order. And then you'll keep going on to the minor ones. It's just so you know. That's... There'll be a uh, chart later you'll get to look at that kind of breaks them down that way. So I did that. So it hopefully helps to helps me to know them in smaller chunks where to find them. There are a number of wonderful songs out there to help you learn the books of the Bible. If you uh, listen to Go Fish, they have a really a particularly catchy one. Yeah, I think we've had a Books of the Bible one. The Go Fish one is called Bible Book Bop. All right. Everyone make it to Daniel. Here we go. Here's our next one, the Minor Prophets. Again, messages from God. You have a longer list here. Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Phew. Lots of potential kid names. <laughs> Just copy-paste, is that what you said? Oh, you wish you could, I know. When you're not in the habit of writing, it's like all of a sudden your hand gets tired. Good thing it's only 12 names. No, uh, yeah, 12 names. Yeah. 
Yeah, in the order of the Bible, it's down one column, down the other for what's on the screen. So the first one is Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah. Do you? Does anyone else have a friend named one of the names up here? Excellent. I have a friend named Joel. A friend named Jonah. Micah, I think I know Micah. So when you're opening up your Bible and you find Malachi, you know you are at the end of the Old Testament. Not a lot of pages. It's a pretty, pretty short book. Give me a thumbs up when you've reached Malachi. Malachi, the last one. As you have time to look through your workbook in the back of it, you will find one page for each book of the Bible. Um, it's from a resource called Sketch Your Bible, and it tells you just a little bit about what each book is about. So it can give you some ideas for how to like draw a picture that'll help you remember what's Jeremiah about or what is Malachi about. Um, and you can use uh, your uh, Bible or study Bible um, at home, they might have a brief introduction about the beginning of each chapter, and that can be really helpful to um, help you remember what's in the Bible and kind of how it goes in order. So um, who knows what a lament is? Have you heard the word lament? You maybe don't say it all the time at home, like were you lamenting over the rain today? perhaps. Maybe some of us are really excited about the rain because we need the rain. Yeah, like you're annoyed or sad. It's a way of expressing, if you're making a lament, you're expressing your you know, kind of grief that you're upset about something. Um, so the Book of Lamentations, which is in the, one of the major prophets, is kind of like that. And we get to play one more game, which I think is perhaps one of the hardest because it is Lamentations or Taylor Swift which is oddly, oddly hard to tell. <laughs> so for this one, let's all stand up, go to an aisle. I don't care if you're over by the windows or in the center. And if it is Lamentations, you are going to come toward the front. And if it is Taylor Swift, you are going to go toward the back. <laughs> Wait till next, next week when we have Taylor Swift or Revelation. It's amazing. <laughs> All right, here is your first one. If you believe it is in Lamentations, you're going to come toward me. If you think it's Taylor Swift lyrics, you go away. He pierced my heart with arrows. Yeah, that's T. Swift is back there. Lamentations is up here. All right, it is... Lamentations, chapter 3. Well done. Well done. All right, how about this one? Where we stood was holy ground. This one is Taylor Swift. She apparently had a song called Holy Ground. <laughs> All right, how about this one? Let him bury his face in the dust. Lamentations or Taylor? <laughs> Griffin's like, it's got to be Taylor. <laughs> this one is indeed Lamentations, chapter 3. Well done, well done. 
How about this one? They can mock me in their songs. Taylor Swift or Lamentations? We are fairly evenly split. This is Lamentations. Again, chapter three. Sounds like a real like an uplifting read before <laughs> before bed tonight. Lamentations three. All right, how about this one? This path is reckless. Taylor or Lamentations? I am sensing a much heavier Taylor contingency, and you are correct. Treacherous is the name of the song. You came near when I called you. You came near when I called you. It is Lamentations, chapter 3. All the gems are there. All right. How about this one? Because of all the women of the city. Because of all the women of the city. Taylor or Lamentations? There's a lot of movement. This one is Lamentations, chapter 3. <laughs> All right. I'll fight their doubt and give you faith. I'll fight their doubt and give you faith. This one is Taylor Swift. How about... It's getting dark, and it's all too quiet. And it's not talking about just outside here tonight. You are correct. Also, Taylor, haunted. And how about this one? My heart is poured out upon the ground below. Lamentations or Taylor? Lamentations, this time chapter 2. Well done. See, not always easy to tell. <laughs> Lamentations are Taylor Swift. Excellent. Have a mint. <laughs> awesome. Yes, you may. All right. So continuing our Old Testament discussion. So again, our sections here, we had the Pentateuch, which is also history. We had history, wisdom, literature, and prophecy. Um, is it true that the next page in your book is a timeline? Yes, it is. So here's something kind of interesting. Um, as you look through the timeline, you will notice it is not in the same order of the books that I had you write down. And any idea why that would be? So, yeah, Esther. Well, yes, th that is true. Why is it not in chronological, I can't even say it now, chronological order? Yeah, because. Because they are grouped by type of book rather than the time period that they are about. So often our Western brains are very in time order and like that's how we would typically write a story. Uh, oftentimes, um, especially the Hebrew way of looking at things is more circular. Sometimes you'll be reading the Psalms and you're like, they just said the same thing twice. Yep, they would say it this way and then they would say it that way. All in, it's called a couplet. They, re they repeat things differently. Um, they think of time differently and tell stories more about maybe telling a number of things around the story to tell their message. So yes, these books are grouped by type rather than by timeline. So oftentimes a Bible will have a timeline in it, especially um, going through the different um, prophets and going through like First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, and so forth, so you can see how those all fit together. All right, time to take a look at the New Testament. The first section of the New Testament is the Gospels. These talk about the life of Jesus. Four books to write down here. These books were written by... Is that on the next page? Boom. Turn the page. You got it. Um, these books were written by people either who spent time with Jesus themselves or they interviewed people who spent time with Jesus themselves. It's not any further away than that. So um, 
in particular, like John, spent a ton of time with Jesus. He was one of the disciples, right? So he wrote eyewitness accounts of what happened. Luke interviewed people. He hadn't spent time with Jesus himself, but he spent time with the people Jesus spent time with. And these books were written and pretty widely distributed within 40 years after Jesus died, which means they're, they're accurate. There was not time for them to morph into Paul Bunyan or some kind of legend, right? It's, and people who saw Jesus, spent time with Jesus, were still alive when these were being circulated. And you will get to learn a lot more about that at the beginning of eighth grade. We'll talk through all the reasons to trust the Bible. So these books, in these books, you will see and read about Jesus' life, his teaching, um, from starting from his birth and even pre-birth, talks a lot about his genealogy, his history, um, how he got, how God placed him um, in humanity, and it talks about his death and his resurrection. The history book next is Acts, or Acts of the Apostles. It starts with Jesus' ascension and talks about the start of the church, so spreading the news that Jesus is the Messiah. And both uh, that was spread to both Jewish people uh, and people who were not Jewish. They were called Gentiles. They had not um, followed God before, but they got to learn about Jesus. Then, in the New Testament, most of the rest of the New Testament is letters to the groups of new believers. So here, here's another good list. Three, six, nine. Only, like, less than 15. You got it. Um, so these are usually named after where the people were, where the church was. So Romans was written to Christians in Rome. Corinthians was written to, those two letters were written to people who lived in Corinth and so forth. That is true all the way down to the last, up to the last four. So Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. Yes, Ethan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm, I think it was, no, I, I don't think Christianity was part of the downfall of the Roman Empire. That had to do with their cultural stuff. But uh, read mm, in Acts, Paul talked to the emperor in Rome. He actually got to tell about Jesus to the head guy in Rome. And yes, much more of a Greek influence. Much of the New Testament was written in Greek. Um, sometimes you will hear those people called the Hellenists. That word is used a couple of times in the New Testament. And there was some conflict about making sure that everybody was being taken care of the right way. And the church figured that out to make sure everybody was provided for, regardless of their background. All the way to First and Second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. These letters were all written by one guy. <laughs> These were all written by Paul. Give me a thumbs up when you get to Philemon. Anyone have a friend named Timothy or Titus? Nobody has a friend named Philemon? Just checking. Unlikely, I'm guessing. All right, everybody close. A few more letters. 
Now, these were written to different groups of believers. Um, and some are named for the person who wrote them. Some are named for who they were written to. Um, so we have Hebrews, James, First and Second Peter, First, Second, and Third John, and Jude. You're doing great. Your hand can make it. You're almost there. much after the Bible. Yep, right. <laughs> yep, so Peter was a very good friend of Jesus, right? And this James uh, was not the disciple James, was the brother of Jesus James. All right, everybody close? One more. Do I even need to flip the slide? What's the last one? Revelation, the last book of the Bible, which was also written as a letter, but it is prophecy. As you continue, if you flip the page of your book, let me make sure I'm in the right place. Yes, you will see this. Um, this is another way of uh, visualizing the books in the Bible, kind of by, like we talked about, them not being in chronological order, but being in order by type. So you can see how they're broken down to the, the law or the Pentateuch, history, poetry, major prophets, minor prophets, and so forth. So that can be a helpful way to organize that in your brain, if, that, if you are a visual person. In your booklet, there are a few quotes, and I would like you to gather up with your parent and talk about which quote, uh, read through the quotes, choose one, and talk about them with your parents. Got them? So, yep, flip the page after the colorful page. Yes, at the top there are a couple of different quotes about the Bible. Read through those together and each pick one that stands out to you and talk about why, do you, why did you pick that one? What about it grabbed your attention?
We have covered a lot tonight. We have made it all the way through the books of the Bible. Pretty cool. Um, what are some things that we can be thanking God for based on what we've been learning? Shout out a few. I'll include them in our closing prayers. What are some things we can be thankful for? Life. Thankful for life. What else? Parents, awesome. Bless you. Yeah, Esther. The Bible, absolutely. Other things. Just priming the pump for Thanksgiving Day when Grandpa and Grandma say, let's go around the table. <laughs> what else comes to mind to be thankful for today? I'm writing down rain and the seasons. And I'm thankful that the days get longer by Christmas time. <laughs> they start to get longer. <laughs> Anything else to include in our prayers tonight? All right, let's pray. I'll close this in prayer this evening. God, we thank you for the very gift of life. We thank you for the gift of family and especially for our parents. And I thank you for these parents who are uh, pouring into their kids uh, and passing on the faith to them. And we thank you, Lord, that you want to communicate with us and that you give us your word, um, that we can know who you are, that we can trust uh, in your character, and uh, we can be confident that you don't change. We thank you for the way you've made the world. Um, for all of creation, for the rain and the seasons. And we pray, Lord, that um, you would just continue to provide all that is needed for life. I ask for each of these families, Lord, that you would give them safe travel, that you would give them the rest that they need uh, during these days, and that you would preserve everybody in health. Um, open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to hear your leading and guiding this week. And I ask, Lord, that you would draw us into your word and... Um, Give us wisdom to understand what you would have to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Next week, last week before Thanksgiving, um, same flow. We'll start upstairs and then move into the sanctuary for our teaching time. I guess I will put in a plug. Ooh, thank you, Mason. Um, so two things. Thank you for showing that. If you uh, took home the spiritual gifts inventory, um, I'm trying to think. I have the key for that in my office, so as we walk back, I can get it for you. Um, so you can see how God has gifted you. Um, and then second thing. So next Wednesday is our last time of this. The following Wednesday, if you are in town for Thanksgiving, we have worship at 7 o'clock, and we have a pie social afterwards. It is back and better than ever. So we are doing it as a fundraiser for the um, youth mission trip. So there will be um, samples of pie and a pie raffle so you can win a whole pie to take home from one of several guest chefs. So it's going to be a fun night. <laughs>